So usually on here, I talk about the evolution of prototypes and Apple devices, how a very early product went through its phases and then became the product we see as consumers. Today, I wanna to try something similar to that, but a little different, how the dynamic island came to be. So dynamic, not a notch, but a dynamic island. It, it, it's so dynamic, you just wanna hum, take a bite out of it. So let's take a look at a couple of last year's phones. It does make a lot of sense compared to the iPhone 12 Pro Max, because this is a massive notch and it takes away from a lot of the display. You're now able to, on these larger phones, really utilize that display by catering more information, having it be less squished. A lot of people have noticed that the actual island isn't really so much of an island. There's actually a display panel between the camera and the face ID array. The pixels are just seemingly turned off by software. I don't think the dynamic island was something Apple designed since launch. I think it was a last second marketing addition to the phone to really help differentiate it from the previous year's phones to try and drive sales. Let me explain why. Firstly, we need to dive into a brief summation of how iOS development works. As of about iOS 14 or so, it's divided up into two broad areas per se, base system and feature flags. Base system is obviously kernel, low level, anything that just makes the phones run and makes sure iOS can do what it is. Feature flags, however, is Apple's way of separating new features, why it's called feature flags, from base system. The concept being that you can iterate all of you, what you need for the base system to make sure iOS at its core is stable and then add new features on top of that as you get system stability down. My evidence for why this is likely a last minute addition fueled by marketing and communications at Apple is quite deep. Initially, you can look towards feature flags, as I said. It's a very comprehensive list of all of the new features that are going on the phone. In the case of iOS 16, Apple did not remove the feature flags folder from the public betas, making it accessible if you decompile the firmware. Within it, we cannot find any real evidence throughout the beta cycle of there being a dynamic island. It's not referenced at all in feature flags until seemingly about late August. Additionally, there were a number of marketing assets that have been shown without this dynamic island filled in. They just show a camera hole punch and a face ID hole punch. There is no fill in of the dead space in between. It is just display. Now the biggest piece of evidence would have to be the actual designer behind the dynamic island. Per his Twitter account, as well as a couple other sources, it seems the dynamic island was worked on by maybe just one, or at most a couple people inside Apple. Usually big headline features, let's say like camera software, will have a large team of people, if not several teams working together on it. To have a single person working on a feature is very uncommon within Apple and not something standard. Now this leads into my theory. Likely, this one person at Apple was working on it is a pet project. It's very common for engineers to have some leeway in what they do, either with their free time or for their team. Usually engineers have some creative liberty on their projects as it can help with overall innovation. Likely, this one person thought, huh, this is a lot of dead space. Let me try and find a way to fill it in. Consequently, they created the dynamic island. And as I said, it's very uncommon for a single person to be credited with work like that. It's usually the team of many. Additionally, off the bat, not a whole lot of stuff supports the dynamic island. It's only a few big teams at Apple, like wallet, maps, and music. It's rather uncommon for a big feature to have such little support. Likely, he just created the dynamic island went to marketing communications at Apple, they liked the idea and they worked on the feature, which would be why we can see marketing assets mid-summer without the dynamic island and the lack of its emergence within the feature flags file on the 16 betas until late August. 
It's definitely a cool feature, although I think it was rushed and half-baked. Likely the work of one that got approval of many to create something to help differentiate this phone from this phone. Why would you buy the 14 Pro Max when the 13 Pro Max is honestly pretty much the exact same. It has the 120 Hertz ProMotion display. It has a really good camera array that can capture ProRes RAW. The only real difference is the front display with the new Dynamic Island design. I hope this is a good explanation as to my theory at least on how the Dynamic Island came to be and a big part of why we really can't do a lot with it. This was never something Apple intended to launch with the phone. It's just something from one person to try and make the front display a lot less useless. If you want more dives to quirky features like this from Apple and how late stage they truly are, please let me know in the comments and what features you'd like me to dive into their development. Like and subscribe for more deep dives into prototypes and content like this.